So as I went to empty the first pot, uh, I saw something in there I haven't seen for a while. And it's a marbled sandy goby. Now we have caught one about half a kg in the pond behind me there. We stocked a few in there that we'd caught in the wild, but it was too small to be one of those. So I think it's just uh, one of the fry that we've put in from collecting all the wild fish in our irrigation ditch. And um, yeah, it's the second one I've got in the shrimp trap. First time I got it, I didn't have the camera and I was just too bone idle to go and get it. But down here's the shrimp trap. Hopefully, he won't make me a liar out of me and uh, have escaped. He's a beauty. He's still in there. Right, let me get the trap out. There's a few shrimp in here as well. The snake I've had have already had a huge feed this morning. Right. Plenty of shrimp. It is ridiculous the amount of shrimp we've got. Feet emptying these traps two or three times a day. And uh, it's like this every single time. We'll put that bad boy back there. The place is alive with them. It's a good sign, isn't it? All right, let's get the little bundle of joy out then. These don't grow that big, in fairness. Probably about, if I remember correctly, just over three kg. It was also about six and a half pound in old money. Someone did say how expensive they are uh, in the Western world. Over here, I did check, because I got all excited when I heard the price, uh, that it was 200 baht a kg, which is quite good for a freshwater fish out here. Um, but bearing in mind, guys, now, uh, as prices go up because of the current situation, um, even tilapia is over 100, 100 baht a kg. I don't mean the Benin, I mean the, the Tab Tim, the ruby coloured ones. But look at him, he's beautiful. Oh, they do eat other fish. A few of you have been concerned, you know, we're putting lots of predators out in the lake. Uh, the barbs, my God. Java barbs, we've got the, the red finned barbs as well. I, th I think they're uh, tin foil barbs. Uh, we've got a bit of cow, a bit of soy, just about every single uh, silver scaled fish you could imagine uh, uh, are spawning like crazy in here. It's just thick with them. And what we don't want in the future is for them to, of course, become stunted. So um, the idea is to have a good head, a good stock of predatory fish i mean the, the even the barbs and the, the the walking catfish and such like they'll and the and the telepathy included they will eat the babies the you know the very small fry um well i did get one one walking catfish that had choked to death on a trying to swallow a telepathy of that size but i think even with those uh predating on the on the small stuff in the lake we're still going to need the big stuff as well so we are looking to get a, a, at least two or three arapaima in here uh, what else? Uh, Toon's got a heart set on a couple of alligator gar. I don't, I'm not a particular fan of those. I think they're incredibly, potentially dangerous when you're, when you're trying to unhook them. Uh, and, but one of my favourite fish is the, the Chow Praia catfish. Um, also, if we can get hold of a couple of black-eared catfish as well, which are pretty similar. I'm not sure if they're in the same, the same species group or not. So yeah, we will have some big predators in here, but not an awful lot, because then they'll take down a 2kg tilapia or barb or something like that, no no problem. So we want stuff to eat on the fry and we want stuff to eat on the big stuff. That's why we're we're trying to trying our best to source these these big predators. God, there's all fish swirling around in the grass here. Oh, I just put it on. <laughs> I just pushed it down straight on top of a fish. Could be anything. Could be anything, but probably a, a buduk, a walking catfish, the Malaysian ones. Right, I'm going to get my shrimp back for the giant snake head, or bachador. Uh, I'm not going to bother bringing in the other shrimp trap now. They're all full. They're, uh, they've had a right old feed this morning because 
been doing a little bit of crayfish trapping in the grow out pond and been getting up. I think they're called better fish. Got about 30 of those and a load of shrimp as well. So uh, they're more than full, uh, but they, they will still, <laughs> they'll still nosh on these, no problem. Uh, what else been going on fish wise? Uh, we had the guy who came and bought a, a, a lot of fish for us recently. We did, uh, who bought the, the snake heads and Siamese carp and Chinese big head carp, that sort of stuff. He gave us a call and he said, uh, I need to get rid of some, some more make on catfish. So if you're interested, uh, I'll do them for 15 baht each and they're bigger than the last lot you had. So I've got a little bit of footage of them. So we put 10 in the grow out pond where I'm going past in a minute. And we put the other 10 in the lake. Wow. Oh, man. So I have a little food left. Uh, it's good that we're splitting the the new stock up because uh, the, only this morning when we walked past this like this pond here we saw a cormorant I haven't seen one for about a year hopefully it was just feeding on the thousands of guppies that we've got in there and um, baby garamis as well uh, they're, they're generally a bit slower than anything else we got in there uh, but they are quite small whereas the uh, the Mekongs and the we've got some Siamese and some big head in there uh, they're a little bit bigger so it's just being vigilant not going to net the whole thing what we found with the cormorants or any other birds around these ponds the ones that are the open build stalks getting the big apple snails you just got to come out every half an hour or so and then they soon get the message and and jog on. We went through the rigmarole of putting fishing line all over them before, but birds are flipping clever, aren't they? And they, they'll find a little area to, to squeeze in, and then uh, that's it. They'll just, they'll just keep on pecking at stuff. So hopefully we'll be all right. Uh, just means I've got to get some more exercise and get out and about. So there you go, sandy coloured, well, marble sandy goby. A lot of people think that uh, gobies are only saltwater fish. Uh, but these can these can survive in brackish water, but they like slow slow rivers and ponds, lakes, that sort of thing. Normally they come straight over, but I'm not sure if they will because they've already been fed. Oh, they are. I'm not going to stick the GoPro in again. What I might do is shove them down here, and then because the last time I fed them shrimp, some of the shrimp jumped up on the side of the wall about three inches above the water. And uh, they were still jumping out and getting them. Look at them all under the bucket. That's the thing. You put too many. If you put too many in in one go, the, the shrimp shoot all over the place, and then it's not very good for the camera. But what I find though is that once they've had a good feed. If you put another bucket load in, all in one go, it takes them a little while to to clear them all up. Because if not, what I have noticed, yeah, there's a shrimp on the side there. There's so many shrimp in here now that chances of them coming and getting them are quite slim. The underwater footage, I was, I was made up with it. Certainly we've been able to, to slow it down with a faster frame, right? Yeah, I was really chuffed. And... Uh, since then, uh, we've got them taking the odd frog or two. With frogs, although they're only quite small, uh, we've noticed that uh, unless they hunt in like a, a pack, I know it's a shoal, but unless they group together, they don't really take on a frog. Um, surprisingly, unlike the, the common snakehead that we've got around here, um, they don't seem to feed at night, which is strange, isn't it? Very strange. I thought all snakehead would really go to town at night, certainly under the bug light. 
They love the odd bug, but they're not really interested at the moment. Maybe that'll change. Some of you eagle-eyed regular viewers have noticed that we've now got a join button underneath our videos. Uh, for just 50 baht, you can now be part of our membership that we're running here on Paul Pang Farm Thailand. 50 baht buys a little bit of crayfish food. Nice one.